Hello there, it's suddenly 2023 favourite season, so I'm sharing my top makeup of the year. Looking back over products I reached for regularly, plenty of familiar faces from my videos, some off-camera friends, and formulas that impressed me as a full-time beauty creator. You're about to see the longest blush list yet, some simple skin tints, stack of shadow sticks, luscious lipsticks, and great glosses. Categories? Base, brows, bronze and glow, blush, eyeshadow, palettes, mascara, lipstick, glosses, and brushes, with discount codes listed below. Skincare and hair and body favourites are on the way too. Lots to talk about, so let's go! My most used base product of the year merits the Minimalist Perfecting Complexion Stick. Creamy, light to medium coverage that acts as my all-over skin fix, stroking it on to even out my complexion and conceal redness or spots. I always blend with their Brilliant Brush Number no. 1 for a natural finish. It looks so skin-like when you lightly pat or press it in with the brush. Still like using a separate brightening under eye concealer and after finishing my final Chanel backups, YSL Touche Clar took to the stage as a fresh lightweight fluid. For more intense spot concealing efforts than merit, I'm still dipping into my forever favourite from Clay de Peau. Another repeat entry from last year, Number no. 1 de Chanel Revitalizing Foundation is back as a silky, slightly more put together base. Still light, glowy, smooth, but lovely to subtly perfect my skin. Worn by Emily Blunt and Iowa Debris in Celebrity Makeup Bags this year. My spring summer fresh skin pick, Summer Friday's Sheer Skin Tint. Sheer to light coverage, so it just delivers a slight complexion boost in a laid back, no makeup makeup kind of way. I mix a few drops together, then spread outwards, patting it around my nose, chin, and forehead. I have normal to dry skin and love a dewy look, so I don't mind my makeup moving with me during the day a little bit. But when I did occasionally use powder to set more heavy duty spot concealing or my T-zone, it was by Terry's Mini Pressed Hydra Powder. Loved this for a long time. Very effective, but also very natural. A don't know how many times I've mentioned it brow favourite, Charlotte Tilbury Brow Lift, still the one. Excellent wider tip, creamy texture to lightly shade in all over. Adding my Charlotte Tilbury code below. Glossier Boy Brow was back in my brow gel lineup. A quick, creamy pomade for simple sculpting, lifting, and a bit of tint helps your brows stay in place without feeling stuck down. I also enjoyed Merit's Brow 1980 Volumizing Pomade, which has a similar creamy texture, not watery thin or gluey thick, but the larger tapered spoolie means you get even more fluffy lift. One easy bronzer ruled them all. Merit Bronze Balm is as balmy as the name suggests, so it's sheer, blends effortlessly, and looks subtle and natural as it disappears into the skin. I swipe it straight on, smudge with my fingers for a foolproof warm finish. I also tapped Jones Road Miracle Balm in Tawny along my cheekbones as a blush bronzer hybrid. But as you'll see, there's no room in the blush category, so it can stay here. Super balmy and dewy, so it's one for my dry skin friends. A little goes a long way, I just pat a tiny bit onto my cheeks for some tint and glow. More of a gorgeous glossy glow with Chanel Balm Essentiel in Sculpting. Sophia Ritchie's Minimal Wedding Look by makeup artist Patty Dubroff was a source of inspiration for many of us this year and reminded me that this formula gives your skin the best luminous, pearly, shimmer-free sheen. This is officially the biggest blush category in the history of my channel's end of your favourites, led by Merit Flush Balm. This thin, sheer, buildable, balmy blush is a delight to use as a dewy blush addict. I reached for the shade Fox constantly, such a perfect rosy terracotta for sun-kissed, healthy cheeks. When I'm in a peachier mood, hello 2024 colour of the year, more on that shade family to come, Violette FR Bisou Blush in Louise is parfait. This swirled, marbled, pink and beige stick is balmy at first, then a slightly powdery matte as it blends. Really seamless, so much so that the texture almost disappears, so I really like to layer this fresh shade. Earlier in the year, a smaller stick I loved was the Charlotte Tilbury Easy Lip and Cheek Wand in Super Chic, sold in her Quick and Easy set or as a refill, which I wish had a legit lid. Another top sun-kissed terracotta, like a more pigmented version of my old favourite Formentera, which she did bring back. A new Charlotte Tilbury blush creation I fell for was her Matte Beauty Blush Wand in Pillow Talk, the ease of her sponge tip highlighters in a long-lasting, pigmented matte liquid. Pillow Talk is a rich, dusty rose, bold colour, so I give it a soft squeeze and stick to two dots per cheek. 
Sophia Ritchie certainly gave nude sticks a big boost this year when their sticks featured heavily in her wedding weekend, so I rediscovered a 2019 favourite, Sunkissed. This shade might have been what began my terracotta blush obsession in the first place. Pigmented matte, it's still creamy, so it sticks around longer than my dewy picks. I also got back into Sunset Strip, a much brighter coral pink, so fresh and vibrant on its own, or patted on top of Sunkissed for a pinch of brightness. After revisiting the texture in a video this year, Rare Beauty's Stay Vulnerable Melting Blush in Nearly Apricot hung out in my daily makeup bag for quite a while. Like Violette FR, this is so creamy in the compact, but transforms to a whipped powdery feel for a delicate pop of colour. Quick honourable mention to an innovative new formula this year in a similar balm to powder family, Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Flushed controls oil for soft matte colour that won't slide off your cheeks. Perfect monochrome look with tan jubilee on cheeks and eyes. Stick season for eyes this year. One of my most worn soft brown latte makeup looks was this Chanel Stilo Ombre et Contour in Contour Claire. Very creamy crayon that's a cooler brown than I normally go for, so it very sneakily sculpts your eyelids like a no shadow shadow. Then closer to my lash line, I often added Nude Sticks Magnetic Matte Eye Color in Fig. Super creamy too, and easy to smudge and soften for chocolatey brown definition. This duo became a key casual brown combo for me for daytime looks or layered to look more elevated. Elf Snow Bud Shadow Stick in Copper Chic was a winner from a drugstore dupes video I worked on this year. So impressed by the lasting power, and I loved this taupey bronze as a low key sheer wash all over the lid or closer to my lash line and under my bottom lashes. That product sparked a real shimmery, taupey shadow moment for a few months that also featured Rare Beauty's All of the Above Stick in Contentment, a smooth, creamy, pigmented rose taupe, but softens nicely with your fingers. Great to brighten up the eyes in a hurry. Sticks aside, Merit Solo shadows were right up the top of my shadow leaderboard this year. You can find my detailed review with swatches of every shade, but I had Studio, a taupe with caramel warmth, and Social, a cooler, soft mauve on repeat. Easy blending, then no budging. To me, these two are pretty perfect pots. Very much looking forward to trying the new Armani Eye Tint shade range and formula in the US soon. Plenty of American beauty content to come. My 23 camel smoke tube is really on its last legs. An ideal wash of soft tan brown, so I'm hoping the new 20 or 22 might be a good replacement. Early in the year, my most worn shadow was REM Beauty's Midnight Shadows Matte Liquid in the shade BRB. Thank you Ariana Grande for making this perky pinky mauve that enhances your eyes, pigmented but shears out nicely, lasts well, big tick and I have an REM Beauty code for you. During further Korean beauty exploration this year, I finally tried Kaja Beauty Bentos, and Glowing Guava is the trio for rosy shadow lovers. A muted, soft matte pink, smoky mulberry to deepen your lash line, and a pop of rosé shimmer. Such fine, smooth powders. Found on YesStyle, code below. Now, palette picks. Pint-sized but full of personality, the Bake Up Beauty Micro Palm Palette in Pastels was created by fantastic celebrity makeup artist Joe Baker and brought so much joy to my routine this year, wearing shades in my inner corners or as watercolour art like Suki Waterhouse. A more subdued, sophisticated colour scheme that stands out, Tom Ford Eye Colour Quad in Sous le Sable. In a video on everyday makeup that I enhanced for my birthday, I talked about this rosy brown quartet as stunning solo artists or a cohesive choir. Truly awesome foursome. An unexpected hit, Lime Crime Greatest Hits Classics Palette. Never tried the brand before, but after reading that the rosy shade In Bloom was used on Riley Keough in the series Daisy Jones and the Six, I tracked it down and these cool, rosy, berry, burgundy tones never let me down easy. A rock star colour story. A mascara formula that lingered from last year was Dior Pump and Volume. Always gives me oomph, length and lift without looking clumpy, but I've used it so often it doesn't have much pump or volume left now, so I was blown away when I swapped to YSL Beauty Lash Clash Mascara in Uninhibited Brown. The brown means it doesn't look as heavy as black, but wow, next level length and volume, and it didn't leave a speck behind when I sobbed through the film All of Us Strangers, so that was a real test. 
the lipsticks that hung out in my bag. Bobbi Brown crushed lip colour in Italian Rose. You will always be famous. Third year in a row here because it lives in my bag. Honestly, could be charging rent. It's just my ultimate soft matte, blotted yet buildable boost of warm pink. Another laid back bullet was Chanel Rouge Coco Balm in Natural Charm. It was another Sophia Ritchie formula reminder. She wore a pink to her wedding, but this browny caramel nude is more me. A slight kiss of colour, nice light feel and a satin matte finish so it won't slip around like other balms. Apart from Italian Rose, the other almost my natural lip colour shade I went for for natural looks was Chanel Rouge Allure in A Demi Mo, a neutral mid pink in their classic comfy satin formula, a little softer and quieter than some of my other brightening My Lips But Better shades. The Merit Signature Lip Formula continues to impress, a shining example of excellence in the lightweight sheer lipstick category. When I wanted a hint of sandy nude in a swipe or two, slip delivered. Balmy, buildable, truly comfortable for a hint of neutral slash warm beige. Speaking of comfortable, plus some soft shine, Chantecaille Lip Chic is effortlessly chic. First fell for this formula about 10 years ago. Then on two separate occasions, I asked a friend what lip colour they were wearing and it was Sari Rose. So it was a sign to track down this wearable nude rose blossom glossy lipstick. It was the year of brown gloss, if this group is anything to go by, beginning with Lisa Eldridge Gloss Embrace in Sorcery, which is a lush, cushiony, nourishing formula. Described as a cool toned, earthy rose with a touch of mauve, it's like a My Lips But Better gloss shade if it was from the 90s. I did a deep dive on shade relatives of Clinique Pop Plush Creamy Gloss in Black Honey Pop this year, so it deserved a mention for kickstarting this whole colour theme. A balmy, thicker, but still comfy old school gloss feel with a beautiful red tone and texture that clings to your lips in a good way. I think I ended up enjoying the look of Dior Lip Maximizer in Mahogany even more. Sorry, Black Honey. The whole Dior Mahogany family is gorgeous, but there's something so enticing about how sneaky and understated the gloss version is, elegant on its own or over a rosy lip liner. Another distant Black Honey relative discovery was Givenchy Rose Perfecto Liquid Balm in Chilling Brown, a formula several luxury lovers have mentioned in my comments over the years, and it's a beauty. Coffee nude meets rosy red for a natural flush and plush balmy feel with a bit of a peppery kick. Quick brush recap to bring us home. I mentioned Merit brush number one as a perfect companion for their minimalist stick. Dense but soft, mimics your fingertips. Then my most used shadow shapes. I have multiples because I trust them so much. Refer brush 01 and MAC 217. Classic blending shapes anytime I want a wash of colour. MAC 219 is excellent for inner corner colour. Hello, Bake Up Beauty pastels. And Merit brush number two was particularly useful because it also has a tiny end to sneak colour under my bottom lash line or apply as liner. That's it. Back to one monster favourites format this year. I hope you enjoyed it. Over to you. Cannot wait to hear about all of your 2023 makeup favourites in the comments. Please let me know what made your list, whether they were older flames or newer discoveries. Don't spare any details. Thank you so much for tuning in and supporting my content this year. I will see you for my skincare favourites very soon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.